Good evening all. Welcome to this new session that is Objective Structured Clinical Examination GUT Part 1. I wish all my subscribers a very happy new year 2024. So coming to the first OSCE, you can pause the slide and see all the questions. So what is the best possible diagnosis? Here you can see there is a uh, cystic lesion noted within the uterine wall with fluid levels. It is seen separately from the endometrial cavity, not communicating with the endometrial cavity. So the diagnosis is accessory and cavitating uterine mass that is ACOM. So what is the criteria which is used to diagnose ACOM? Uh, there should be an accessory cavitatory mass along the uterine wall under road ligament, not communicating with the uterus or uterine cavity. Normal uterus fallopian tubes and ovaries. Blood degradation products can be seen in the cavity and also important feature is no adenomyosis should be seen in the ut main uterus but features of adenomyosis can be seen in ACOM. So what is the most common differentials which can be considered is cystic degeneration in leomyma and unicornate uterus with obstructed rudimentary horn. So what is the uh, uh, differential diagnosis is nothing but unicornate uterus with obstructed rudimentary horn. HHG can help in differentiating ACOM from unicornate uterus with obstructed rudimentary horn. This is the OSE1. Next OSC2, you can see there is a two, this is MRI pelvis and this is the MRI brain. So what is the diagnosis based upon features in both pelvic and brain MRI? And what is the sign and what are the common pathologies? Here you can see there is a heterogeneously hyperintense T2 signal mass lesion noted in the cervix with extension to the adjacent structures, even partly abutting the, uh, extending to the parametrium. And also you can see in the same case, you can see there is a, even infiltration into the left VEJ with the left hydroidal nephrosis. So the possibility of a neoplastic mass lesion arises from the cervix. So in the same case, you are able to see uh, there are multiple infarcts in the brain involving both the anterior circulation and also even the involving the posterior circulation. So this is bilateral anterior and posterior circulation infarcts in case of a cervical neoplasia or malignancy. So this is called as malignancy related ischemic stroke or Rousey syndrome. What is the sign? This is called as three territory sign. So this is very important sign you remember. So whenever you see a bilateral anterior and a bilateral ACA and also PCA or posterior circulation strokes in a suspected case of malignancy, definitely suspect malignancy related ischemic stroke. And the sign is called three territory sign, which is a radiological marker of malignancy related ischemic stroke. What are the common pathologies associated with malignancy three territory sign or malignancy related ischemic stroke or lung carcinoma, gastric, colorectal carcinoma? gynecological carcinomas as we have seen in this case hepatic renal prostatic carcinoma and lymphoma so what is the most common frequently associated malignancy with this stroke is lung cancer is the most frequently associated with malignancy related ischemic stroke so remember three territory sign as a radiographic marker for malignancy related ischemic stroke next year you can see 35 year female with chronic pelvic pain you can see there are multiple uh, cystic uh, foci scattered along the serous of the uterus. So this is classically called as endosalpingiosis, which is nothing but direct ectopic implantation of the fallopian tube tissue along the peritoneal serous of uterus, ovaries, bladder and pouch of Douglas and also rarely around the parietal peritoneum, lymph nodes and skin. What is the most common differential for endosalpingiosis? It is nothing but deep pelvic endometriosis or cystic endometriosis. But in endometriosis, there will be hemorrhagic signal on imaging and also presence of stroma and histopathology helps in differentiating this entity from endosalpingiosis. What is the serious complication associated with this diagnosis? As endosalpingiosis is considered as a part of spectrum of the peritoneal serous lesions, borderline and low-grade ovarian serous neoplasms are the, is the serious complication in case of endosalpingiosis. So remember endosalpingiosis has these multiple cystic uh, foci scattered along the serous of the uterus and pelvic organs. Next, uh, this is the fourth OSCE. Here, what are the abnormal imaging findings, most probable diagnosis and name two syndromes. So here you can see there are multiple contrast, you can see multiple contrast filled tubules noted. These are the multiple contrast filled tubules noted which gives the streaky appearance or paintbrush type of appearance. Here these multiple uh, abnormal paintbrush appearance will form a uh, bouquet of flower appearance. And also here you can see this is growing calculus sign when there is dilated calyx with adjacent uh, along with the calcifications, calyxial diverticula with calcifications this may lead to growing calculus sign. All these features are seen in medullary sponge kidney. So the what is the syndrome, what are the syndromes associated? They are Erlendahler syndrome and congenital hemihypertrophy or beckwith Whitman syndrome are associated with medullary sponge kidney. So remember pain burst type of appearance, bouquet of flower appearance and growing calculus sign all, in, all are seen in medullary sponge kidney. Next, these are the two cases. One is A and other one is B. So, we will see the findings and diagnosis. 
A here you can see there is a narrowing of the prostatic urethra and also you can see there are multiple radiodense uh, hyperdense foci scattered in the prostate. These are nothing but radiopaque brachytherapy seeds implanted in the prostate and this is nothing but post brachytherapy or radiotherapy induced severe stricture of the prostatic urethra. Here this is the other case where you can see there is irregular bleeding or narrowing of the bulbar urethra and also this is these are nothing but uh, normal opacification of the litter's glands and there is a irregular periurethral cavity originating from the ventral aspect of the bulbar urethra which is nothing but periurethral abscess. Next this is OSC 6 you can pause the slide and see the diagnosis and questions. Here you can see this is nothing but both the inferior aspect of the inferior poles of the kidneys are fused. This is horseshoe kidney, and also you can see there is a heterogeneously enhancing mass arising from the uh, pelvis of these fused kidneys, which is nothing but a um, uh, malignancy. So this is a diagnosis horseshoe kidney, and what is the culprit which is which leads to this horseshoe kidneys? Ascent into the abdomen is restricted by inferior centric artery which hooks over, over the stomach, which stops the ascent of the kidney. What are the serious complications of these diagnoses? Are Willem's tumor, transitional cell carcinoma of the renal pelvis and renal carcinoid this turned out to be a transitional cell carcinoma of the renal pelvis what is sigmoid kidney a sigmoid kidney is an uncommon variant of horseshoe kidney in which both upper and lower poles are fused next here you can see this is 26 year old female chronic lower abdominal pain since six months and complaints of hirsutism no fever no vaginal discharge and no pcod treatment here you can see the right over is completely enlarged with peripherally placed dilated follicle which is hyper intense on star and also no uh, hyper intense areas on T1 suggestive of hemorrhage, no blooming on GRE. On IV contrast, you can see there is peripheral remanagement around the ovary and also there is peripheral enhancement of the follicles. So this is not a case of torsion, but it mimics torsion. So what is the diagnosis? This is called as massive ovarian edema. This is an entity you should remember, which is mostly benign, almost always unilateral and in approximately two thirds of cases involves the right side. This is nothing but intermittent or partial torsion of the ovary compromising the venous and lymphatic drainage, but with preserved arterial supply. So that's why there is enhancement of the ovary, which helps in differentiating this from ovarian torsion. Most common association is with meek syndrome and precocious puberty. There will be abnormal uterine bleeding and even elevated androgens. That's why in this case there is hirsutism. So what are the differential diagnosis which can be ovarian torsion where you can see twisting pedicle sign and valpur appearance, ovarian fibromatosis, oophoritis, ovarian hyperthicosis and PCOD. So I want to show one case of ovarian torsion. You can see this is a young female. Right ovary is completely enlarged, peripheral placed follicles and even follicular rim sign is seen. This is the enlarged ovary which is showing significant blooming on GRE and there is no enhancement on IV contrast and this is the uh, vascular pedicular twisted pedicle. So this is the video you can see. Here you can see this is the ovary with twisted pedicle and even complete uh, uh, hemorrhagic ovary this is the left side twisted pedicular vascular pedicle next OSC 8 you can see there are two cases one is a that is neonatal sepsis case other one is a neonatal hypotension electrolyte imbalance case so what are the diagnosis of a and b here you can see neonatal in neonatal sepsis you can see there is a hypoechoic mass noted in the superior pole of the kidney in the suprarenal location this is classical of neonatal adrenal hemorrhage this commonly occurs in preterm infants and here you can see this other case where you can see neonatal hypotension the patient presented the neonate presented with hypotension with electrolyte imbalance so the whole of the adrenal is enlarged with cerebriform type of appearance that is uh, adrenal with uh, the, these adrenal convolutions re resemble the cerebral parenchyma that resembles the gray and white matter so this is nothing but cerebriform type of appearance seen in congenital adrenal plasia and also this cerebriform appearance can be seen in solitary plasma cytoma that is mini brain appearance and cerebriform type of enhancement can be seen in inverted papilloma these are the conditions you have to remember for cerebriform appearance so first case is neonatal adrenal hemorrhage and other case is congenital adrenal hyperplasia thank you all